What's good, Liberators? Fingers here with a very special episode of DX2 Demon Review, for we don't oft talk about sub five star demons, even less so talking about sub four star demons. But today we are talking about the three star legend that is the Fallen Osi, one of the 72 demons of the Goetia. He has the power to reveal truths and fill his summoner's enemies with blind rage. Osi can also change a person to their desired look. Ooh, that's, that's useful. But as a consequence, that person will not realize the transformation took place. What? What? So you get what you want, but you don't know you got it? That is the... And especially in the looks department. That's, that's the worst part, because then you can't take advantage of... Oh, Osi. Osi, dog, you're killing me. Dang. All right. As for the stats, he's got a decent strength stat. Four to three star demon. What is that? 188 naturally. But you can pump that up to 208. Don't you dare sin infuse him. Those resources are far too rare and valuable. I love you, Osi, but we, we can't afford it. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. But fun thing about... Three star demons is that you can put in a total of 60 Mitamas into these guys. So that leaves you free to dump 20 into Vitality, 20 into Agility, 20 into Luck if you were feeling crazy like that. In fact, I should I should have taken the 20 out of Vitality and gone straight into Luck for that nice crit rate. He's a physical kind of guy. He deserves to be critting as much as possible because none of his skills innately come with uh, enhancements to his crit ability. He resists darkness, nothing more, in his original form. Skills. Well, oh, I should, I should draw, I, sh I should shine a spotlight on this. For a three-star demon, he has no weaknesses and resists darkness, which early game, you're just starting out, this is the guy you want. Okay, the Protector O.C., is going to be your boy, all right? He will carry you through so many of those early fights. He can solo a bunch of them. Uh, he, he's, he's great. He's a great starter demon. If you're look, if you're just starting out, even though these days, I, I'm pretty sure they dump a bunch of five stars on you right away when you make a new account. It's been years since I've made a new account. I've only ever made one, and I, I didn't re-roll at all. I got my four-star Cerberus and I just rocked out with it because I, I wasn't familiar with the concept of re-rolling. And when I saw what Fallen OC could do, oh, who was it? Who was, he doesn't do videos anymore. Kyoto. Kyoto Gaming. He would do uh, DX2 videos like three years ago. And he turned me on to Elementalist OC, and he was correct. And you could rock out with Elementalist OC in PvP, to be clear. He was rocking out in early wave PvP because of his no physical. And there weren't, there was one demon with physical pierce at that time, and that was a Psychic Mara. So if you had a no physical demon, you could cheap, you could cheese your way through many, many a fight in pvp and it was a lot of fun to do god simpler times miss those days less pandemics more smiles on people's faces for the transferable skill a thematically appropriate hades blast physical damage on all enemies with a power of 120 not bad don't sleep on hades blast i love it even though oc here does not have physical pierce tragic but he is a three-star demon and not only is he a three-star demon he is a first generation three-star demon so he's hurting on all fronts level this thing up plus 70 percent of damage dealt but no enhancement to critical rate so be aware you're probably going to want to spend some time getting those critical brands going not in the main slot but in the tertiaries get that going as much as possible and for his second skill, the useless Mazianga. Electric magic damage on all enemies with the power of 100 and a magic stat 
of 82. Again, this is early. This is first gen, baby. This is first gen. These are first gen demons. And Sega still hadn't figured out that trying to mix physical and magic demons just makes for bad demons. It's either that or everyone found one way to play them. For example, Psychic Koholin, another Gen 1. He's a physical magic hybrid, but everyone just fused a Psychic Koholin for Wind Pierce or Force Pierce and then made him a spellcaster for his Mazandine and just swept people. Another early PvP favorite. And it just it just doesn't work. It just you lose a slot that could have this could have been Fizz Boost, you know, to make his Hades Blast pop more. Because his second skill is the infamous charge. Self enters a state of charge, increases the next physical attack damage by 125%, 150% if you are running OC with Templar Dragon. It's always nice to let you have your DX2 giving you an extra 25% damage. And fantastic, you can charge them up and then let loose with Hades Blast. They both cost the same amount of MP, so if you're in for a protracted battle, there's no reason not to go charge, Hades Blast, charge, Hades Blast, and just keep going back and forth between the two. And that way, you reduce the risk of missing with Hades Blast, thus costing you two press turns by doing that. And if you can somehow put him in the turn order where he's operating on a half press turn, then boom, you get the half press turn charge, and the Hades Blast... All for half press turns, whether he crits or not, he still gets that nice charge damage. I got him in the legendary elementalist archetype, which grants him a unicorn skill for a three-star demon. Null physical. Adds fizz null, which means physical attacks do no damage to this guy unless they have... Physical Pierce, which all modern physical demons tend to do. But again, Gen 1, 3 star, still, OC, we love you and respect you for the trail you blazed. Because when Sega saw people using you in PvP against their precious 5 star demons that they screwed up, they were like, hmm, maybe, maybe we should give all our gotcha exclusive and all physical. You know, that's really useful, you know. Maybe, maybe we should give all our physical demons physical pierce so that they can cut through those null physicals out there and just brutalize people. Oh, yes, OC was the inspiration for all of it. All of it. Quang Di, Guan Yu, all of them. Astaroth, OC, Fallen, three-star OC was the progenitor of all this madness. And I thank him. For that for the transferables i got him with some lesser physical skills bloody glee plus 15 percent to critical hit rate you can give him savage glee which is 25 percent to critical hit rate but again three star demon with three star demon uses especially in 2022 and of course the cliche or classic however cynically you want to look at it fizz boost plus 50 percent to physical damage it's what he's here to do. He's here to hit things and stand tall by nullifying all of your PvE enemies. Physical attacks as for brands. Give him those war brands. Give him those divine brands. You know, with what his kit is, I would say rock the divine brands. Because if you're bouncing back from the 6 MP Hades Blast to the 6 MP Charge... Going back and forth between the two. You want to keep that going as long as possible without having to pass. Ah, uh, oh yeah, I would say Divine. Give him Divine Brands with all those good physical attacks. Percentage boosts you can muster. But War Brands work just as great. Give him Speed Brands if you need your team to be just a little bit quicker than your enemies. Because in PvE, there's no excuse not to go first. It's just... Just an advantage. There's no downside. Not like PvP. So, 
get that. And I would say Divine Brands, AIM Brands are your money for this guy. Give him MP for days, make him super accurate so you're not suffering the loss of, humi uh, the humiliating loss of press turns if you miss your physical attacks. Just, it is a humiliation when it happens. And since he's a three-star demon, there is no panels. So let's jump to the other archetypes and see what the Os has to offer. Let's see. The three-star archetype selector. The most useful item in DX2 by far, of course. For the Aragami archetype. And again, let us recall, Gen 1, three-star demon. Seg was still kind of finding their footing with these demon designs. For the Aragami archetype, Megaton Press. Physical damage with a 30% crit rate on all enemies with a power of 105. Now, Hades Blast has a power of 120, cost 6 MP. Megaton Press, power of 105, 5 MP, but with a 30% critical rate on top of it. So, this is somewhat redundant, but I, I see what they were going for here. You go charge. And then you get this skill with the built-in crit rate that if you're striking at four demons, it's going to crit on one of them. Odds are you're going to get that crit. So interesting, but you're giving up no physical on your early game demon, which is just having a redund a semi-redundant skill. You got Hades Blast. Serves the same function, more or less. Uh, again, uh, can't do it. Can't do it. Can't give up the, the no fizz for that. For the Protector Archetype, Tetracarn, all party members repel physical damage for one turn at the reduced cost of 6 MP. This used to be a boatload of fun. Tetracarn and Makarakarn in early PvP was actually a factor, believe it or not, because everything didn't have a pierce effect on it. So you could, especially if you were throwing up Tetracarns and Makarakarns, on your offensive team where you could control them rather than your defensive team's AI, you could cheese your way through many a battle and it was very, very satisfying to do. But unfortunately in 2022, Tetracarn and Makarkarn have not seen any use since, I don't know, mid-2019, give or take. So on this one, we gots to take the pass and if he's throwing up tetracar and he's not attacking which is what oc is built to do for the psychic archetype strength amp 2 couldn't give him fizz boost because he's a three star demon and he just lives with the disrespect of that knowledge every day personified with his psychic archetype being strength amp 2 plus 10 to strength thank you come again Hard pass. And the big winner. The rare big winner. The elementalist archetype. No fizz, which we discussed. And the reason we're all here today to celebrate this three-star legend. So if you're just starting out, if for some reason you're just starting out in this game in 2022, and you've bumblefucked your way onto this video, and you're listening to me ramble right now, get yourself an elementalist OC and have yourself a blast. And that's all I got for today, Liberators. Just looking at this wild leopard man, those fantastic abs, and that sick cape. I really like how that cape, it's like the way it, uh, the way it wraps around his neck, that's really cool. I like I like that. That's that's got some that's got some like D and D fantasy RPG feels to it all over the place. Dual wielding long swords like a boss. You know, not like those pansy ass rogues with maybe a short sword in one hand and a dagger in the nah. Two long swords and let's fucking go. Have a good one, Liberators. Don't get captured.